I've suddenly decided I don't want to talk to you anymore. What I want to do is talk to my guest tonight. Um, he was a rock star, but unlike any other rock star, he didn't die in a pool of vomit in a hotel room full of pills and hookers. Instead, he died in an enormous fireball in a car crash. Despite this, he's with us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Martin Kemp! <laughs> Very well. Good, have a seat. <laughs> so, you were killed in a car crash. Yep. And you're still here. Yep, and I'm back. 6.35 p.m. Yeah. Well, Couldn't you have smashed up something a little bit less good than that? <laughs> well, yeah, but that's the beauty of sometimes of being an actor, is that you can smash up these really nice cars, you know. It's some, some kind of sadistic pleasure you get from it. Can I...? Offer you a new car to smash up in your next venture? Yeah, a new five series BMW. <laughs> <laughs> you, like Ross Kemp, left in a car accident. You've gone to ITV, like Ross Kemp. You're yep. both called Kemp. Yep. He's been on this show, now you're on it. Does that mean you're now going to marry Piers Morgan? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something. When, when I first left EastEnders and, uh, you know, I joined ITV and I had a few quid in my pocket and uh, I thought right I'm going to treat myself so I went down to the local 911 garage Porsche garage and I'm standing there and uh, looking in a window of a car you know and uh, someone touched my back here and looking in the window here of the next car is Ross buying his Porsche so I thought well that's what you get if you leave EastEnders you know? so you've got a 911 turbo <laughs> no not a turbo I've got a but he's got a turbo yeah he's a big boy though now, come on, you can't allow him to have a turbo. <laughs> and you, what have you got then? I've got a Carrera, which is it. It's Carrera. Lovely. It's 911. Now, you see, Whatever is it a Carrera 2 or I is tell it? I'll tell you which one it is. It's the black one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've had a long line of uh, 911s ever since. My first car when I was in a band was a 911. And I think I, over the years, I've had about eight of them. But I'm really, the, the new ones I'm kind of disappointed in. These ones are kind of. A bit too right. soft. Yes, yeah, trouble. You see, I before, quite... before you know it, you're up in fifth gear and, and it's too easy to drive. Yeah, I prefer to get into top gear myself. <laughs> but, um. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. A bit of a dig at the opposition there. Um, <laughs> did you start yeah. off with 911 then? Yeah, I started off with a Lancia that I had for a few months. I like that. Which one? It was, it was the one with the hard top on the, the roof. And Ta the, I know, the, the folding, but there was a folding beta, back window. Beta, not the coupe, the beta. It, the beta. Be a, where's that man with a beard? <laughs> <laughs> not the Monte Carlo, that was the one that was mid engine The Lancia Beta. With it the was back a beta, but specifically, it was a, where's Beardy? Spider. Was it a spider? What was it called? Spider. Spider. Be we know the be beta. Be now, all right, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> It was, the, it was the beta spider. Beta spider. Which I, I loved it, you know, and I had that for a few months. Did it, well, that's enough. Then it would have oxidised. Yeah. <laughs> and then I went out and bought um, a 911E, which was my first Porsche. But didn't you have a 944? Well, I had one for about a day. Uh, I, I was into 911s, and uh, I, I think I had about four of them on a the trot, and then I, I thought I'd need a change, so I went out and bought a 944. And my mum and dad lived down in Dorset, so I drove, drove it down there one day, and I was so disappointed with it on the way back, that I stopped in the 911 garage and bought another one. So, um, <laughs> so it was it lasted one hours. day? Yeah. Good second-hand buy. Yep. Anyway, on the roads, what is it that gets you really going? All right, there's two, two things that get me. One is the bus lane on the M4. Yeah. And the other is the 4 by 4 trip to school. The school run, 4 by 4 Yeah. So, do you do the school run? I do, yeah. And what car have you got? 4 by 4 <laughs> <laughs> Is it OK doing the school run for you? Well, it's something that I, I, I want to do, because uh, I think you have to show... Well, I have to show my kids some kind of normality. And, uh, because but you... I would imagine that the women at the school gates don't react in a normal way. I mean, if you saw him <laughs> rocking up at the school, would you react in a normal way? Would you say good morning, Mr Kemp? Scream. You'd scream. Okay. Now, you'd... Uh, no, listen, you, you have to block it out and you, you just have to get on with How can life. you block it out when all the other mothers are wearing <laughs> negligees? <laughs> Oh, I wonder, if my, I wonder if he's doing the school run this morning. I think I'll bother with a dressing gown. Well, if I, <laughs> I get down there, they're all in fishing waders up to here. No, you, know, you know what happens in my house is that um, a lot of the time I'm away working and filming, so I'm away for a few months at a time. And then when I do come home, I make it a priority. Like, I, I either take them or I, I bring them home. That is so noble. 
That is so noble, isn't it? I do, I like that very much. I can't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> Still, it will have stood you in good stead today, because, of course, you came down here to drive our reasonably priced car yep. round our track. Now, um, these are the people who've been um, so far. We've got Jody Kidd sitting at the top, um, above JK. Yep. And then at the bottom, we've got Richard Whiteley. Presumably, you'll be after Ross Kemp here. Uh, listen, I, I do not know. I haven't got a clue. I just shut my eyes and put my toe down. Was it wet or was it dry out there? It, well, it was, it was soaking wet. And because the, uh, the water was sitting on the tarmac and it was reflecting up like a mirror, and I could hardly... You couldn't really see the markings. You should be a racing driver. This is exactly <laughs> the sort of thing we hear from that lot with their big hair. <laughs> well, so far, our fastest wet runner has been Ross Kemp. Right, OK. So let's so see. So I'm looking at 154. You'd be looking really at 154, who would be the fastest. This was mildly damp, Alan Davis, okay? okay? Who'd like to have a look how Martin did? Yes? <laughs> okay, let's have a look. Oh, that is wet, actually. Yeah. So okay. miserable, day. See, I couldn't see the markings. That's just, you've used that excuse. Now think of another one. <laughs> you've got tire squeal in the rain. <laughs> That's not too, that's un... Ooh, I lost the, yes, you were off, but that's, you were, yeah, no, that's fair enough, but that's just sliding a bit wide. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> this is very good, I mean, Steve Coogan was... That's sliding a bit from the back, that's very good. Yes, a bit wobbly at the end, Steve Gambon corner, that's and... Quite... <laughs> Just before we reveal the time, wasn't completely smooth out there in your practice, was it? <laughs> wasn't as smooth as that. Who'd like to see what happened while he was practicing? Yes. Put it on. Oh, it's the hardest corner of the lot. Threading a needle at 100 it miles is, an hour and. <laughs> Very good! <laughs> that. <laughs> That's the furthest anybody's been from the track. <laughs> no joke, nobody skidded off onto that piece of tarmac. But anyway, your time. Yeah. One minute, and it's a wet lap, and we're all agreed on that, so we'll put the W on. One minute, surprise, surprise, the same oh. as the other. <laughs> <laughs> I do think it's quite funny you're going around telling the world that Gary's your brother. Plainly, yeah. is, this is unbelievable. So I need a showdown with Ross, then? Well, these two want a showdown. Yeah. They really want to race yeah. each other. And I think a Kemp showdown yeah, might absolutely. be the of the day. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Martin Kemp!